In a shocking report less than two weeks from the midterm elections and during early voting and mail-in voting, Just the News reports Democrat blows whistle on alleged ballot harvesting scheme. Florida opens criminal probe. Former candidate for Orange County Commissioner describes widespread vote trafficking operation in Orlando area. Authorities see evidence to warrant criminal probe. The claims made by this Democrat are that individuals targeted the black community to harvest ballots, to pressure individuals to turn over ballots, and that those that did received $10 for every ballot that was returned. What's interesting is that similar claims were made in the documentary 2000 Mules. The media has said repeatedly that 2000 Mules is debunked. Well, I don't know a whole lot about 2020. I know that right now, in August of 2022, a Democrat is blowing the whistle. Just the News is reporting this, and they are NewsGuard certified. Regardless of what you think about all of this, it's getting very, very interesting in the election with the New York Post being hacked this morning with shocking headlines being dropped. And I hate to say I called it, but what did I say in my earlier segment? For those listening on the podcast, you'll hear this in the next segment. But I said, you will get Democrats knowing this is fake, who will act like it is real. And lo and behold, That's exactly what we're seeing from prominent Democrats decrying the New York Post saying these headlines are abhorrent. How dare you? Wow. Democrats are actually trying to use hacked tweets and posts on the New York Post. And apparently the New York Post has issued a statement saying it was a rogue employee. Things are getting crazy, man. It's not just this this alleged uh, ballot harvesting scheme, which again corroborates or I should say doesn't corroborate. It is very similar to what 2000 Mules said, what with the $10 per ballot. We also have the, the lawsuits coming down. The RNC is suing. This is suing. We have in Pennsylvania, they're saying it's going to take days to calculate who actually wins. It's hard to know how things will play out other than to say, while the polls have begun swinging heavily in favor of Republicans, the challenges, the October surprises and the insanity It's all starting to heat up. Videos of riots are popping up. Interviews where people are claiming there is no Antifa. Fact checks from Newsweek saying Antifa riots never happen. Ted Cruz is lying. The View coming out and defending Fetterman saying it was ableism or that that Dr. Oz was 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 supposed to do no harm. In one uh, podcast that's that I find particularly humorous, Politics Girl who is a Democrat personality, says that Walker is unfit to serve and then goes on to defend Fetterman. It's almost like these people just can't. It's like they can't be reasonable. It's like they can't have a logic pathway follow to its natural conclusion. Or they're just lying. You know, I said this uh, when it came to the New York Post getting hacked, that there's going to be stupid people who believe it and evil people who exploit it. Because the New York Post put out headlines that were like Ben Shapiro calling for violence and just horrible things that were just clearly not true. The New York Post publishing an article article calling for violence against the president and things that were clearly not true, but they're trying to use it. So I will tell you this as we read this uh, story from the Democrat whistleblower. Whenever they say debunked, they never actually elaborate on how or what that even means. If someone comes out and says, here's a video of a person with a stack of ballots dropping in the ballot box, I say, "Okay, you're going to have to prove to me exactly what it is. You can make your claims. But certainly it is not debunked just by me saying, you know what? That's not real. Debunked. And that's all the media ever does. Give me some proof. But when you take a look at what's going on with the New York Post story, you realize they're lying. Let's read. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member in order to support our work directly. As a member, you are keeping our journalists gainfully employed. And we've got field. We got we got uh, a lot on the ground, a lot of these these uh, big campaign events and protests. Plus, we've got opinion pieces and reporters writing up the news and fact checking every day. You'll also get access to the uncensored Timcast IRL show Monday through Thursday. So check it out. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Here's the story from Just the News. They say. 
Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' new election crimes unit has recommended state police open a full criminal investigation into a Democrat whistleblower's detailed complaint of a long running widespread ballot harvesting operation in the African-American communities in politically important to central Florida. Former Orange County Commissioner candidate Cynthia Harris filed a sworn affidavit in late August with the Secretary of State's office, alleging that illegal operations to collect third party ballots have been ongoing for years in the Orlando area, where voting activists are paid $10 for each ballot they collect. Now, a sworn statement. This woman, if she's lying, and they can prove she's lying, she's going to get locked up. I believe it. I mean, I believe she's telling the truth. Maybe she's wrong. But here's a big story. Let's see this covered more. She described an intricate system funded by liberal leaning organizations that dispatch ballot brokers into black communities to pressure voters to turn over their ballots. The $10 fee per ballot is divvied up among the parties who help complete the harvesting. The collection and delivery of ballots by third parties is illegal in Florida. The newly created Office of Election Crimes and Security did a preliminary inquiry on Harris's allegations and concluded there was sufficient evidence to warrant a full criminal probe by the state police. The Florida State Department told Just the News on Wednesday. Granted, this story was published late last night. The Florida Department of State Office of Election Crimes and Security was made aware of this issue around September 1st, 2022. After further inquiry, OECS received additional information related to the allegations on October 17th, 2022, and performed a preliminary investigation. Since OECS is an act uh, is an investigative entity and does not have authority to make arrests, the office forwarded the complaint to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for possible violation of Section 104-0616 Florida statutes, it added. The development in Florida adds an explosive new allegation to concerns nationwide that ballot trafficking is widespread in some battleground states, a claim made famous by the research of the conservative watchdog group True the Vote and a documentary released earlier this year by filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza called 2000 Mules. Arizona prosecutors have achieved several convictions in that state for ballot harvesting, most recently securing the guilty plea of a former Democrat mayor in Yuma County. True the Vote filed a complaint in Georgia, alleging thousands of ballots were harvested in the 2020 election. But those allegations have not yet been corroborated as authorities negotiate with the nonprofit group for its evidence. A Wisconsin investigation unmasked a sophisticated ballot harvesting effort targeting vulnerable nursing home patients in communities like Racine, Wisconsin. And I will stress, we're hearing more and more about this. The question is, To what degree is it widespread? How many ballots is it? And will it have a direct impact? My advice to everyone involved, sue now. If you are directly uh, impacted by this, you have standing, you should sue, be it left or right or otherwise. You know, the scariest thing to me is if this is true and the system is broken, if it's not true, then our confidence in the machine is completely broken and only getting worse. Harris, who narrowly lost her election for county commissioner in August, described to Just the News her years long knowledge of ballot harvesting in the black communities in central Florida. She even recorded a ballot broker coming to her home in 2017 to collect her ballot and obtained the script that Harvester was given by her bosses to make the pitch for a voter to turn over their ballot. Quote, so what happens is in our community, when absentee ballots are mailed, You, the candidate or any political party can find out when the absentee ballots are mailed and to whom what happens and to whom what happens in is these ballot harvesters. They know which batch has gone out. They go to the door and they ask you for your absentee ballot. Just the news. No noise. Television show on what Harris told just the news. Sorry, it's a quote. So I was wondering why they put that in quotes. But Harris told just the news. Quote, well, In communities that don't look like me, no one does this, she said, referring to white neighborhoods. But in our community, it's kind of like an accepted practice that the man is coming by to pick up my absentee ballot or the lady is coming to pick up my absentee ballot. In her sworn affidavit, Harris identifies specific individuals who direct and act as ballot brokers and were paid to collect ballots and provides intricate details on how the system allegedly works, along with emails, receipts, video footage and other evidence. I want to pause real quick as this is particularly uh, serious and point out that just the news 
is NewsGuard certified? So if anybody you're sharing this with calls shenanigans or tries to claim this is bad reporting, it may be individually, but just the news is certified by NewsGuard as not publishing false content. That's important. Here we go. In her sworn affidavit, Harris identifies specific individuals. Ballot brokers typically work up to a year in advance, she said. Ballot brokers visit individuals in their residences and assist the individuals with filling out a request for a mail-in ballot. After the mail-in ballot arrives, the voter is instructed to wait for the ballot broker's return to the individual residence. They are asked to not seal the certificate envelope. In rare circumstances, if the voter has filled out the ballot and sealed the envelope, the ballot broker will take the ballot and then steam open the sealed envelope, the affidavit said. The ballot broker will either correct any votes, if necessary, that were not voted according to their wishes or just throw them out. This is nuts. Harris described how much as in Wisconsin, vulnerable patients in rehabilitation centers and nursing homes in Florida were targeted for ballot trafficking. Quote, for nursing homes, ballot brokers get the list of residents by cross-referencing the address with the voter registration list. The ballot broker figures out the best way to make contact, usually through friends and family that may or may not know they are even part of a scheme. They help the resident fill out the mail-in ballot or just take the mail-in ballot from the nursing home and deliver it to the ballot broker. Now, I want to pause and say Project Veritas, it recorded someone doing something not too dissimilar. Not every state bans the practice of ballot harvesting. In Florida, it is illegal. <clears throat> Harris, who has worked as an, as an election poll worker in the past, said, I'm sorry, here, here we are said her biggest concern in coming forward is that ballots collected by third parties have no chain of custody, making it easier to commit fraud, such as destroying a ballot or altering it. You know, it's just utterly ridiculous that people don't understand that once the ballot leaves your hand and is not placed in the mailbox or it's not directly given to the supervisor of elections, you don't know where it goes. It's possible that they throw them away. We've seen evidence of that. I mean, imagine if the individual voted Republican, they'd be like, oh, thank you. And they throw it in the garbage. That's why they don't want it sealed. You see the steam open the ballots and then they mismark them so that if it's not for their candidate, then the ballot is spoiled. So when people think the numbers are low, it's really not low. It's just that someone has intercepted before it gets to the proper authorities. <clears throat> Harris alleged that the Orange County Supervisor of Elections who has held the office for 26 years, has turned a blind eye to ballot harvesting in her community. Quote, this has been going on for so long. You have to look at the supervisor of elections himself. He's been there since 1996. That's 26 years that this has been a blind eye turned on our community. The people that we entrust in the fair elections and the democratic process. Well, I will pause right there and question the whistleblower themselves. You said you filmed this in 2017. You're only coming forward now after you lost your reelection. I wonder. I have to wonder. The Orange, the office of the Orange County Supervisor of Elections, Bill Cowell, Cowless, said in a response to a request for comment regarding Harris's claim that he is not aware of any issues regarding ballot harvesting. So he is unable to comment on that at this time. The office added that if there are any issues that Harris is concerned about, we would recommend her filing a complaint with the state for investigation. After voting, after voting ended in the August primary, Harris was in second place with a total of 3,158 votes on election night, which was supposed to trigger a runoff election because the candidate with the most votes didn't receive 51 percent. <clears throat> there was supposed to be a recount, according to Harris. But somehow she kept losing votes instead of gaining votes. So when they certified the votes, I was a total of 14 votes missing. I know how to do basic math. I don't understand how you could go down in numbers versus going up. But the story that they told me was that the machine was fed extra ballots. And that's why I was six votes ahead of the person that came in third place. Well, if I am six votes ahead of the person that came in third place at the end of the night, how do you lose 14 votes within a couple of days? Florida has had other issues with regard to ballot harvesting over the years. In 2005, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer was indicted on a felony charge of paying a campaign worker to collect absentee ballots before his 2004 election, along with three other similar charges. The charges were dropped by the prosecutor who said that none of the persons indicted had intended to break the law. It's amazing how that works, right? Think about any other crime where intent is required. That's just insane to me. In 2013, 
A ballot harvester in Hylia received one one year probation as part of a plea deal after police said she collected at least 31 absentee ballots for the 20, 2012 August primary election. While a, felony, while a felony charge was dropped, the woman pled guilty to two misdemeanor counts of illegally possessing more than two ballots from other voters. Now, look, I get it. If you're in a store and you grab candy bars or you forget, you didn't realize you didn't intend to break the law, or if you're doing self-checkout, didn't scan, you didn't notice, and you walk out with it, you weren't intending to break the law. So I understand why intent does matter. But I think it's silly that you can have people commit voter fraud, and then they'll be like, well, they didn't know they were. So now the claims are particularly interesting, especially when juxtaposed with a May 27th, 2022 fact check from Reuters. Fact check. Does 2,000 mules provide evidence of voter fraud in the 2020 U.S. presidential election? Well, let's see what their uh, final termination is before we can read some things. And uh, we scroll down and blah, 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 blah. They say verdict. The documentary 2000 Mules does not provide any concrete, verifiable evidence of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election. Technology and election integrity experts consulted by Reuters also did not find the geolocation surveillance or any other information presented showed plausible evidence of fraud. The article was produced by the Reuters fact check team. Read more about our fact checking work here. Well, we can use words. That's for sure. Words can be spun and twisted. I don't know if 2000 mules is direct evidence of, of voter fraud. I would probably lean towards if you want to get uh, nitty and gritty. It's not. But I would say it's uh, probable cause worthy. There should be investigations over these claims. I mean, I'll put it this way. We're talking about intent to commit a crime. If someone walks out of a Walmart with a candy bar they did not pay for, is that evidence they shoplifted? Well, if you see somebody walk out, if you see someone grab a candy bar and then walk out of the building, is that evidence they shoplifted? You could argue technically yes. I mean, right? What if it turns out it's an old person who had dementia and they just got confused, forgot they grabbed it, and then they stood outside for a few minutes and circle, spun in circles for a few seconds? You see, the context really does matter. In which case, you do have evidence that a shoplift may have occurred. We should investigate. And upon investigation, we find out it's an old person with dementia and they're sad and confused. And they immediately handed over the two dollars for the candy bar. You see what I mean? So we see a lot of interesting things coming out of 2000 Mules. What's particularly interesting, though, is they try to debunk many of the claims here, except it now seems that a Democrat in Florida is actually corroborating similar claims. Let's read what they say. Here we go. Does it prove fraud? Does it provide evidence? Well, oh, hold on there a minute, actually. The, the, the headline is different from what their verdict asks. Does 2000 mules provide evidence? Evidence is not proof and proof does not mean definitive. Look up the definitions. As I already stated, evidence of shoplifting could be someone walking out of a building, but did they really shoplift or are they confused, right? So 2000 Mules does provide evidence. It doesn't prove anything happened in 2020. It doesn't prove anything else, but evidence enough to warrant, I'd say, a criminal investigation. They say a documentary directed by conservative commentator Dinesh D'Souza claims it can prove widespread fraud was carried out during the 2020 presidential election in the United States. I don't believe it can prove it. I don't believe that's proven. I've said it before, even Bill Barr claimed there's fraud. The question is, is it proven beyond a reasonable doubt that it, it changed the outcome? That I do not believe so. But if fraud is happening, we should absolutely break it down. And here's the other important part. If 2000 Mules comes out and says this, they could just be like, hey, why don't we investigate this to debunk it? For some reason, they are adamant about not having adjudication or, or some kind of law enforcement action. They say, all five enlisted states were swing states in 2020. Reuters has covered the topic. DeSosa's documentary says Biden victories in swing states could be thanks, could be thanks to 2,000 people or mules who were hired by unnamed nonprofits dubbed stash houses to conduct ballot trafficking, i.e. Stuffing, nu stuffing numerous drop boxes with potentially fake absentee ballots. It, is also it also alleges the so-called mules were paid $10 for every fake ballot they submitted. Here's a possibility. You have a Democrat running for office. Let's argue that Democrats are corrupt, especially in Florida. This Democrat claims to have evidence, but doesn't report it until after she loses. Was this individual holding uh, the, the claims as leverage in case the Democrats turned on her or something? What if this individual is lying 
to discredit, or I should say lying, to earn, to discredit Democrats or try and earn some favor because she saw 2,000 mules. 2,000 mules made a claim. This is back, this is back in May. About $10 for every ballot. Now this woman comes out and says, oh yeah, yeah, $10 for every ballot. Could she be basing her false claims off of 2,000 mules? We need an investigation. That's all I can really say because who knows, right? I know you want to believe. No, no, it's got to be. Mm, show me. Adjudicate it. Bring it before a judge. Have the evidence presented. And let's have an official legal statement and assessment as to what is really going on. We have to. Otherwise, things will only get worse. I have no reason to doubt a sworn affidavit with a criminal probe. But we'll see if it's proven. So if we don't, you end up with this intimidation complaint claims voter was filmed and accused of being a mule at Mesa Dropbox. The incident occurred Monday evening. You'll also end up with this. In this CNN video, it says body cam video shows two men breaching Michigan voting machine in an attempt to copy 2020 election data. Now, these men came to this woman and said that they were essentially, you know, contacted, tracked it you know, by by like the DOJ. You know, they're wearing body uh, bulletproof vests, body armor, and they come in and said they needed to copy the machines before they were wiped. I can understand why they wanted to do that. Wiping the machines would destroy any evidence of anything that may have happened. But it's still crazy that vigilantes effectively are coming in and doing this. This was in Michigan. OK, man. The system is broken. That's really it. New York Post, Pennsylvania election results could take days, Secretary of the Commonwealth says. If you are in Pennsylvania and you are a voter, if you're running for office, you better sue now. I would sue and I would say under the right now before it's too late and say, no, the Constitution prescribes election day. You have one day. End of story. And then the Democrats are going to cry, but but we have mail-in votes, mail-in ballots. We we have to count them. And sorry, I I don't care. You do not get to violate the Constitution and the rules without without changing the Constitution, without a vote. I mean, I'll put it this way. If you cheat or like, like, like if you're in a race, and then you argue you should get five seconds shaved off your time because we agreed in the rules, but like, I never agreed to that. You can't just arbitrarily decide that something benefits you and then implement it. Look at this. The results of the Pennsylvania midterm elections could take days to tabulate, a state official said Wednesday. Acting Secretary of the Commonwealth Lee Chapman told NBC's Chuck Todd that because of a state law restricting when mail-in ballots can begin to be counted, official results for pivotal races for the U.S. Senate and the governor's mansion will not be available on election night. Days. And it's hard to estimate, Chapman told Todd on Meet the Press Now when asked how long it could take to declare a winner in a race that could decide which party controls the Senate. How is it that they're able to count almost all the votes on Election Day, but then these ones that come in the mail, we just can't do it? I say shenanigans. I say a court should rule no. Now, to be real, the the, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, I believe, is Democrat, so it's never going to happen. And of course, we do have the RNC already filing suit, so... I don't know about um, in Pennsylvania. I can imagine it's in 20 different states. They got over 70 lawsuits. So we'll see how this plays out. Now, I want to highlight the depravity of what we're seeing. New York Post employee responsible for vile and reprehensible content on website and Twitter accounts. The cyber intrusion marks the second election season in a row that the Daily has come under fire after reporting on information damaging to Joe Biden. They say, according to a statement from the New York Post, it was a rogue employee. The post investigation indicates that the unauthorized conduct was committed by an employee and we are taking appropriate action. This morning, we immediately removed the vile and reprehensible content from our website and social media accounts. Here you go. Jen Goodman, press secretary for the Hochul campaign, says our response to the New York Post this a.m. Quote, the New York Post has long fostered an ugly, toxic conversation on their front pages and social accounts. But these posts are more disgusting and vile than usual. The New York Post needs to immediately explain how this reprehensible content was made public. While the Post has made its preferences very clear in the New York governor's race, there is no room for this violent, sexist rhetoric in our politics. We demand answers. Evil. Jen Goodman, press secretary for Hochul, 
This is evil. She is evil. I mean, that's it. I was watching some of that pod, uh, Politics Girl podcast, Democrat, because I do listen to the left. And she said, do Republicans have anything to say when, why they won't vote Democrat other than Democrats are evil? Democrats are evil. Not all of them are evil. This one's evil. And I'll tell you why I won't be voting for them. It was very clear and obvious to everyone that the New York Post was hacked. Many journalists commented this. I said, as soon as it happened in my morning show, which for those listening, you'll hear in the next segment in the podcast version. I said, there's going to be Democrats who will take this and they will use it. They will claim it's real. And this is exactly what they're doing. So, OK, let's entertain two possibilities. Jen Goodman and Hochul are extremely stupid or they know what they're doing and they're lying because many people won't actually investigate what happened. They will only hear the statement. Did you see what the New York Post was posting? Oh, my. we need to save democracy. You know, we issued a stern letter rejecting the violent rhetoric in our politics. What's the point of this? It's insane. Let's see. Uh, Joe Biden vowed to end fossil fuels. I disagree with that. He shut down the Keystone Pipeline. I disagree with that. He uh, shut, banned fracking on, on, on certain lands. I disagree with that. He then went and begged Saudi Arabia for oil. I really disagree with that. He botched Afghanistan. I disagree with that. He's uh, abusive towards children. I don't like that. His son, Burisma, the quid pro quo. Hey, there's a lot of reasons why I won't vote for these Democrats. But let me tell you why I wouldn't vote for any of the other Democrats. It's because when they vowed to focus on kitchen table issues in 2018 and got elected, they immediately just impeached Donald Trump. Talk about a waste of our time. It's pathetic. It's insane. And that's what you get when you vote for these people. Well, here we go. The new predicted betting trends. Which party will control the Senate after 2022? On September 8th, Democrats had 68 percent. Today, Republicans have 70. That's right. 538 has moved up Republicans chance of winning by two more points to 46 percent. That's incredible. But when you actually break down the fact that Democrats only need to defend to win, let's say we remove a 50 50 split. There is a greater chance that Republicans have 51 seats than Democrats gain 51 seats. If the Democrats can hold a 50-50 split, Kamala Harris will be the tiebreaker and they will retain the majority in the Senate. It is currently up to 82 scenarios in 100 that Republicans win the House. Over at Real Clear Politics, this is surprising. The Republicans generic ballot lead drops as Democrats see some improvement with the latest polling. Somehow, though, over at 538, Democrats have tanked and Republicans are improving. Republicans now have a 0.6% lead on 538. And over at Real Clear Politics, they have a 2.3% lead. Here's what I think. I think everyone knows the Democrats are busted. Here's Cenk Uger of the of uh, uh, Young Turks. LA is a mess. There's trash all over the roads. Cops don't respond to calls. It's close to anarchy here. Is Garcetti already in Mumbai? Is anything, is anyone running the city? Karen Bass seems to be saying she's going to maintain the status quo. She knows how to work the system. No, thanks. Well, this is what y'all advocated for. When even the Young Turks are coming out saying crime is through the roof, then I am pretty sure that, uh, yeah, Democrats can't win on this issue. And it's a very serious issue. Woman 22 is repeatedly punched in the face and shoved down the stairs at Queen Station, leaving her with a fractured back in latest random attack. Crime has soared 41 percent. Sure. Fetterman claims he raised more than two million dollars in the hours after train wreck debate with Dr. Raz. While Tucker Carlson calls for Senate hopeful's doctor to be stripped of his medical license for, de for declaring him fit to serve. Listening to Politics Girl. She said that being a senator isn't just saying yay or nay. You have to go to committee hearings and meetings and, and debate. She's right. But she was saying for that reason, Herschel Walker is too stupid to be in the Senate. I'm not a fan of Walker. I don't think I, I wouldn't vote for him, but I, it's better than the Democrat, I guess. And that's a problem, isn't it? Now, with Fetterman, same thing applies. Let's be real. Walker may not be as bright, 
But that's a there's a big difference between that and Fetterman being impaired. But there is something interesting there. And I think I can relate to the Democrats. Yeah, I'd rather have Walker than uh, a Democrat. Because the Democrats are going to vote to destroy the economy. Uh, like, hello, how about sending money to Ukraine, which we shouldn't be doing? How about shutting down Keystone Pipeline, which we shouldn't be doing? All of these things that they're doing. How about the Inflation Reduction Act, which hasn't actually reduced inflation, just mass increased spending? Come on. Take a look at the charts. You can see that the Democrats' actions have resulted in negative consequences. What they come out and say is if Republicans win, they might do this. Well, they might do a lot of things, but I'll take what I'll take my chances watching you burn it all down. How about that? So I get it. They look at Fetterman and they're like, don't know, don't care. Oz is worse. And I'm like, OK, well, I look at Fetterman and see someone who's incapable of doing the job. And I see Dr. Oz, who kind of does suck. Agreed. How about that? But I'd rather have the Republican. I'm hoping that enough MAGA first Republicans get in that it stops the machine from f- funneling our money to, to war- the war machine. But I understand the perspective from many on the left. You know, they're in a bubble. They believe fake news. They think they're the only ones who, who know the truth. It's kind of paradoxical, isn't it? That I can say that they're in a bubble and they think they know the truth as if to imply only we do. No, I, I, I know some things. I know that the Republicans are not all good. I know that many of them are bad. I know that many of them aren't worth voting for. And I know that uh, the Democrats are substantially worse. I know that people like Bill Kristol and other neocons fled to the Democratic Party. All of a sudden, now the bulwarks posting pro-choice content. is It's insane. Because they're, war, they're, they're, they're uniparty elitists. And it's all fake news. John Stewart came out recently. And he said that Hunter Biden's Burisma deal was pure corruption. Wow. John Stewart also said lab leak hypothesis was probably correct. Wow. Yeah. The Democrats might try to reel things in, but they're insane right now. What they're doing in schools, they call it book banning. And I'm like, you know, saying you can't have a Playboy in school isn't banning books, dude. Sorry, that's stupid. What's being banned mostly are books with sexual depictions in them. Any other book like Catcher in the Riot ever being banned? I disagree with. Now, there are certain adult subject matters in certain books that's going to have to be up for the parents to decide that I understand. But you can't conflate saying like the political ideas of this book are reprehensible. So it's banned with this book contains lewd images and adult content. That's what they're doing. We'll see. In 2016, Democrats denied the election. In 2020, Republicans did. I hate it. I'm I'm annoyed by all of it. But there are real procedural issues that are being uncovered. Y'all better soon now. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.